to uh, um, that's my dad right there, right here. This one. You get, you got a close up. I got a close up. All right, and this is Robert Kennedy. Who was that? Robert Kennedy. Robert Kennedy. Now, what were you doing here with Robert Kennedy? Well, at the time, I was working for the city, and they, the city had uh, created certain what they call urban renewal offices in the different boroughs. Mm -hmm. And they had a head man for each urban renewal office in each borough, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Harlem, whatever, Bronx. And I was the head man in Bedford-Stuyvesant. So I was the man that everybody came to, including Robert Kennedy, who mm -hmm. wanted to get meet people and do things. That uh, occasion, I set up with Robert Kennedy to talk to the people in the Bedford-Stuyvesant area. So to that extent, I, I, I was the chief honcho in that time. Now the Irish know, back in the day, the first homo sapiens that hit those British Isles were black. Have you ever seen the Ku Klux Klan? Well, I've seen pictures of them. Okay, you never had an encounter? Had, had, had no real contact. Oh, no, I, I, uh, all that took place down south and I was up north here, so I never had a direct, but I knew of them, of course. Okay. And, you know, they were... Talk about the... Were there any free people in America during slavery? Blacks? Yes. Talk about that. There were a few, particularly in, in, in the New England area, Connecticut, Massachusetts. And in fact, when they founded this country in 1787, they signed the Constitution, uh, drew up the Constitution, they had a post office, and they had blacks working in the post office in those days. And, but they, and also, a lot of people don't realize, at the beginning of the Civil War, in 1861, right, it was leading to that, the blacks, whites and black, uh, whites north and whites, they were getting really angry at abolitionists. We all heard of Frederick Douglass, who was abol black abolitionist. At the beginning of the Civil War, there were four million African slaves. I'm calling them African because they were not American then, okay? Mm. There were four million African slaves and 400, over 400,000 free blacks who were not slaves. They couldn't be bought and sold, but they were catching hell, of course. But there were free blacks in them. So, so let me ask you something. Free blacks, I'm trying to understand were they already in this country? They were in this country. Of they were here when the white men got here. Is no. that what you're saying? No, 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 no. There, there were no blacks. Blacks were brought here by whites. No. But it was already black people here. In the central Central America, there were blacks down there that had migrated from Africa. Right. But there were no blacks in America. In Northern America. In Northern America, the only people here were the Indians. So now, okay. Indians. Okay. Who are the Indians? Are are they descendants of African people? Yes. Not really. They are descendants of Mongolian people from Asia. They migrated from Central Asia. You heard of the Mongols, right? Mm -hmm. Chinese-looking people. They migrated doing, uh, across the Bering Strait, doing. The, so-called ice age, when the whole northern part of, the, of the, this world was all ice, and they, north, and they came down the west coast of uh, North America, and then they spread east through America. But they, they, they migrated. They, they weren't born here. There were no homo sapiens born in, uh, originated in America. None. Mm. The first were the Indians who migrated here. Then the Indian, then the the first Europeans that came to North America were Spanish, not English. They came later. Blacks were brought here before the pilgrims. The pilgrims came in 1621, I think, on the Plymouth Rock. We all know that story, if you know anything about history, which most people don't really. <laughs> so, but we were brought here uh, as a sort of indent. We're not, we're not quite slaves at the time. It was only in the late 1600s that the whites started thinking, they had what they called indentured servants mm -hmm. who were white and black. But the indentured servants were only around for seven years and according to the law they had the freedom 
Okay, now let me move along. Talk about my mom for a minute. My mom, what is her, what is her gene, what is her gene, her gene root? Well, she 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 calls herself a, a Blackfoot today. Blackfoot. But she she comes out of a black family. Goes way back. They were sharecroppers in the South in Alabama. She about six seven. Like he's about tenth generation through her mm. in this country. And she goes way back. So she has. But a lot of blacks, not a lot, maybe twenty five percent of blacks, have that Indian connection. I have it. She, uh, she has it. In fact, she she doesn't identify herself as black really. Uh, only partly black. She identifies herself as a Blackfoot, and uh, you know, and a Cherokee. Now the Cherokees were down south, and Cherokees were Indians who more than any, almost any other Indian group in this country assimilated white culture. They dressed in white clothes, they spoke English, they went to, to white schools and all that. But they got their buns beaten. Uh, I think it was, I, I forgot what president forced them out of the south uh, to the west. And that's where they caught hell, you know. But uh, there was no original Homo sapiens on this continent in the beginning. Everybody migrated here. Male Homo sapiens rule the world now. Now, okay. now the women are coming into their own slowly. And my only thing to say is that, unfortunately, we're a big part of our nature is animal. Hey, let me ask you, um, you ever heard of Dr. Ben? I did hear, I, I'm well aware of him. And I've talked to him on a couple of times. I ran into him on the supermarket on 35th Street, because he lived, I think, in, in, uh, in that uh, development on 35th Street. What about Dr. John Henry Clark? Well, I knew of him. I never met him personally, but I was well aware of what he was doing. And, and trying to make black history a major study in scholarship. You know, I grew up on um, trains. I used to love train sets. How long you had your train set? You know what's very interesting? When I was out in the mix, when I say in the mix, your age, I socialized with different groups. I socialized with political groups. One of my roommates when I was in college was Phil Medley, who wrote Twist and Shout, and he had an office in the bill Brill Building, which is on Broadway in the mid-50s, and the Brill Building was a building that all the headquarters of the music developers, of publishers, uh, record makers, had their offices in that building, and writers and so on, and he was a writer-arranger. And he, all these black writers, and not, not performers now, writers and arrangers came to his office, so I had that group uh, I socialized with. Then I had my other social group that I went to a couple of local bars up on Columbus Avenue there. Uh, um, Michael was one of them, and the cellar was another one. People who know this, they would know this. Yeah, he said, how long did you have your train set? Well, uh, I, oh, yeah. He's getting to it. I'm, yeah, I'm getting to it, yeah. But the point I'm making, I, of all these people I knew, and I knew gabs and gabs of people, not one of them, not one of them had a model railroad set. Had a model railroad set? Had not had one. How long have you had just set? Well, I started in the uh, uh, early 1970s. And I was living in Lafayette Morrison, which is across the street. How old would you say this train set is that I'm about to show the people right now? How old is this train set? Well, as it is now, it didn't start out like this. Uh, I would say in the last... Fifteen years has been like this, but I started out much smaller in the early 1970s. Mm. Yeah. All right, here you go, people. This is his hobby. This is what uh, what's 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 you know, A.K.A. Natural Tahuti's pops. This is his hobby right here. Look at this train set right here. Don't even make oh, he gonna cut it on? Woo! I used to love these train sets, man. When, when, uh, oh yeah. See, now that train is stopped there. No, no, don't touch it, don't touch it. Don't See that? Touch. Don't touch the train set, boy. Don't touch it. <laughs> and yeah. I don't have my glasses, I have to look. Don't get the glasses. See that train, 
follow it one of these switches here. So this is the uh yeah. this is the control thing. This is the control the control. Kind. Yeah, just control I control all the movement of uh let's see. That's over there. So that would be uh there it is. Oh man, my son would like this, bro. Now that it be cover, I took it. Oh, oh man. But you forgot you had some, you ain't switched tracks. Well yeah, right. I I uh, yeah, I should have switched tracks. And uh let's see where we are over there. Tahuti, do not touch the train set, man. Look at him. Look at him. He's messing with your train set. Think you think he was nine years old, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Lucky it ring. Okay. You would have left it. All right. Oh boy. See now, this, it was on this track, right? Mm hmm. That's it right there, yep. And this track, and this is on this track, and this is switched from this track. To this track, and I forgot that this engine was Hey, what's here. up? Oh, boy. Let me I see. I don't know. It was just a regular day. You know, uh, something messed up. No, we, 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 we don't know what day yet, because we waiting on Ali Muhammad. Oh, okay. You had to move that? I'm not sure. I got to let him know. I, I'll let you know later. All right? She got a different... Okay, same to you. Oh, you switch tracks? Different power sets. This is one power set right. for this track, this power set for this track, and that power set for this track. See? Okay, let me see you move that green, the big gray one right there. What, these? Yeah. I don't have an engine for this. Oh, you ain't got the engine It has yet? a certain kind of coupler that to connect to these. Uh, these are passenger cars. And I don't have the uh, the coupler for it. I had it at one time, but I don't have it anymore. But. Uh, yeah, these are passion cars. They, they uh, light up. So, would you say most of this train stuff right here is about 60 years old or 70? 60? Well, no, not most of it. I, I, I would say most of it would be about at least 30 years old. Okay. At least 30, because I didn't start this big, really. Right, right. And, uh, so, uh, it, uh, but it, keeps me, it got so complicated that, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, it keeps me busy and I, I, I recommend to everybody that, particularly men, I know it's not easy, but when you get up in age, don't be by yourself. Yeah, get a little hobby or something. Get a hobby or get a woman, you know. There you go. To, you know, to keep you company, not necessarily for sexual reasons, but just to keep you company, somebody to tip with one another once in a while, you know. But uh, this is what uh, keeps me alive at this point. All right. Thank you, sir, okay, for yeah. sharing this with us. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. There you have it, family. Make sure you go out there and get your train set, have a little hobby. I'm talking about when you get up there in age, you know what I'm saying, where you can have something to do. Brother Natural Tahuti's Pops, he's a real down-to-earth brother. I love the brother. I met him, had a good time. And hey, let me tell you something, Brother Natural Tahuti, he talks so much about the black woman being the primary force, but Brother Natural Tahuti has so much love for his pops. Before we got there, the brother went and grabbed up some groceries and brought it right up to his father. So the brother takes care of his people, he takes care of his father. So hey, Black Power fam, that was a powerful, powerful, powerful lesson for myself. Peace.